A big welcome to the Nick Elston Show, hosted by inspirational speaker and transformational speaking coach, Nick Elston. This show brings you the people who inspire, motivate, educate, and engage in all walks of life, sharing their insights and experiences, honestly, unfiltered, and off script. So without further ado, let's get stuck into today's show. Hey everyone, a big welcome back to the Nick Elston Show, season four, episode 12. They said it'll never work. Actually, that's wrong. I said it'll never work. There you go, guys. You need to set on a mission to prove yourself wrong sometimes. And today I have an amazing guest to bring you, like an amazing guest to bring you for sure. I'm on a hot streak of bringing you amazing guests. We have the wonderful Marianne Temelkov. Big round of applause. Ooh, Nick, thank you so much. <laughs> really honored to be here. And I love what you do and the, the work, Nick. It's been a, such an inspiration for so many. And uh, I'm very excited, you know, for, for to be here and to um, share my own story and some some hopefully useful advices that, that can be uh, um, uh, useful for, for the audience. Amazing. Thank you so much. So I'm really glad you had some time to donate our way. I know how busy you are. I mean, I'm kind of, I am going to read this because there is so much you're involved in. I mean, have you got a TV? Do you, do you actually have any downtime kind of thing? Um, co-founder and CEO of Dynamis Group, and I'm sure you'll tell us about that shortly. Co-founder and the podcast hope of Leaders Who Care, of which I was on one of the episodes. Can I just say such an amazing, amazing mission you have? co-founder of the Leader Academy, uh, co-founder of Summer Diva Masterminds. You've got so much going on. First of all, let's bring it back to basics. Tell us like who you are, what you're about, and where's home for you? Well, first of all, I'm actually honoured and privileged to be joining you from the headquarters of Leader Academy, where I was happy to be born, somewhere in the Pyrene Mountains, uh, uh, surrounded by natural springs and vineyards and an hour away from the blue zone in Greece. So th that was an honor and really great wow. to God for being born in, in such a part of the world and, and uh, a family that cares and, and uh, uh, supported me along my journey. Um, and um, that's, uh, that's where I was, uh, I was born and as a home and uh, still to the today's date, I do uh, come back and, and help and, and serve whatever I can. But um, my um, mission, and um, I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. Uh, I was traveling around the world with uh, with my my dad. He was actually uh, taking me around meetings and other um, uh, really business trips, and that inspired me to meet people, to discover what what people are about, how how things happen. Um, and at age of fourteen, I um, I kind of decided to that I didn't want to stay here in, in the family business and I wanted to explore the world like, like any teenager, to be honest. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And that's the reality. And uh, um, I want to go and, and discover. And, and, and I decided to go and study abroad. And uh, um, at the age of 16, I arrived in the UK and um, with no luggage. They lost it along transition uh, along there. And uh, Welcome to the I, UK. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, I, I kind of for me, UK is also home, and I, I love and I honor really the, the the country and how much people have helped. Um, because even though I was the youngest at university, I barely I was actually it was a minimum requirement of being turning seventeen to access the the foundation program that I was part of. And I, luckily, I was studying that in a in a couple of weeks upon arrival, so they they, they kind of let me in without. So, uh, but most of the students were 21, 22 and and so like older and it was tough I, I didn't know how to write an essay i didn't speak proper english it was uh, quite a quite a challenge to be honest of, of arriving and no friends no one really no no parents or it was just literally a step i didn't even have a high school to be honest uh, a high school diploma so i left quite um uh, decisively and uh, um i was grateful that um i had a strategy though yeah I, I said you know what i didn't know a lot of things I don't know how to write an essay. I barely, you know, speak some, let's say, um, uh, fluently, and and I didn't know some of the terminology when I when I uh, study some of the subjects. So I said, you know what? I'll study from the best. That was my strategy. When I didn't know something, I go and ask uh, who is the best in the class, and uh, thankfully they were quite responsive in helping out. Um, and that really meant a lot to me, to be honest, uh, because that really. 
um, have helped me to, I found people of caring and uh, really uh, giving back. And that inspired me to say, you know what, I'd love to do that since a lot of, I didn't have much insight and knowledge around and it was more of a um, kind of visioning. I was, I was really uh, uh, relying on my own interpretation of the world. Um, but of course, along the way, people have helped and that inspired me to, to give back, you know, um, and do a lot of it. It was funny when I arrived in the first day and um, they, they said to me, I was actually late I, I, because they refused the visa. So I didn't, I will, wow. probably wouldn't, wouldn't have gotten there. Yeah, but then uh, a week later I arrived. And the first thing I had to do is open a bank account. So um, uh, because if I didn't open a bank account, I had to give all my money I had in my pocket to pay the for accommodation for a whole year. So it was like I gotta get I gotta get a bank account. So I queue all day and I, I got a bank account. And quarter to five, the guy was closing, and I said, "You're lucky because if he didn't give me the bank account, you had no accommodation." So sort of, you know. But anyway, I slept. I had a, I was so happy to have a room. Uh, obviously, I didn't have luggage, but I didn't have any sheets or anything. I was, but I had a room. That was the most important, and. You know, when I got the room, I got like in, inspired and say, you know what, I'll make it big here. I, I will really invite people or host or I like to do things. So I, first thing I, I go and do is say, I'm going to go and get my uh, like plates and uh, forks and knives and all this, you know, like, and I wanted to be a set of six. So the first shop I go is to the university shop. And, you know, I got some eggs and pan and, and uh, I got six plates. That was important, six cutleries. I go to pay the counter. This is 1999, Nick. This is really talking quite a, quite a long time. You know, at that time, um, you know, Manchester was really going through that major transformation. And um, they told me 100 pounds, 100 pounds to pay for six plates and some eggs in a pan. Well, that, that was thought. I thought, I know UK, of course, is very expensive, but I didn't expect to be 100 pounds. So I said, why is it so expensive? And he said, well, the plates, they cost like 15 pounds each. I said, wow. It's like I'm 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 gonna to scale back my plans of, <laughs> of, uh, of the, you know so I go one plate instead of six. Anyway, I, I got all this and uh, I, I I noticed that they were ahead of some um, flatmates from Botswana from Bahrain which uh, uh, UK they were watching me a little bit funny and one day one guy said why are you eating in that plate? I said what do you mean that's my plate? I was like you know that's like you know um, I wash it I leave it there. I said well. Did you not know this is actually um, a plate for the wall? It's a university plate, so you can actually get it with all the gold and issues and the university logo. And I was like, <laughs> I still have that plate to today's date, you know, with all the cuts of my knife. And I, so later on, I found six plates for one pound. So I'm just saying that this <laughs> yeah. is what, that's more. That's more like it, yeah. <laughs> you know, when you arrive, uh, you know, in a new place, that things like that are happen, but. Beyond that, what inspired me is exactly those difficulties and challenges, Nick, that um, as a result of it, I started helping a lot. And I said, oh, you know what? I want to give back something to where I came from, the community here. And um, I started helping a lot of uh, teenagers, really, to, to um, who wanted to explore and study in the UK, to show them the, the path and the way. And that's... That's how um, it was mainly driven by my own experience of giving back. And, and that turned into a few people coming over to 5, 10, 15, 20, more than 30 young people we personally helped and, and, and wow. coming over. So families would get in touch with me, can you help my son and my daughter? And, and that's what I was doing. You know, I really uh, out of, and that was coming from the heart. But re just re looking back, to be honest, that was, I, I found my greatest success in in my journey was exactly when the moments was giving back not not in the moments that i wanted to earn money yeah or to to do something it was just following that uh, sheer desire and, and that's how leader economy was born you know i wanted to build something of of uh, value and in your own community and went went to the council and said we want to build an international educational business center so we can bring some of this uh, really um, know-how and best practices you know the very in the community here and um it wasn't easy, but they believe because they've seen the transformation with the uh, children. Didn't have the, the we had some support from the family, but we didn't have the full the the money needed to complete that vision. In, in that it was not driven by money. So, but somehow things worked out. And a year later, Nick, we, through that mission again, in missionary visits, we had a, a, a trip from the UK again. And, and you know what? We acquired another camp in the Pyrenees Mountains, which is 
was used to be the executive um, base and with soul, self water, self sewage and, and uh, energy systems uh, for the directors of one of the biggest companies in the country. And it was up for sale. And guess what happened at the age of 23, we acquired that and they, it kind of was a fundraising, but I didn't anticipate the fundraise. It was like, you know what, why don't we buy this? It was just an opportunity. And they say, we'll give you the thirds of the money and, and then, you know, we'll support to, to as a co-owner, et cetera. And that's how it happened. So when wow. I look back, it really, um, some of the greatest successes happened, you know, through, through that um, really sheer desire of helping and giving back. Um, so that's my kind and, of and audience. A- and that's a really big kind of transaction in quite a short amount of space, isn't it? In quite a short amount of time, I guess. The, and and we we I want to go through more to kind of what we're going to be, what you do nowadays, and how you help people in different ways, and uh, and to touch on some of those ethics and morals that really drive what you do. And, and I said that's really important to come on to too. But before we move on, I think it's important to kind of stay in that student space at the moment. Um, uh, just before I hit record, I was explaining that actually my audience is is not all business people it's not all kind of uh leaders uh they are also students they're also people that have been through the prison and reform system it's a really diverse audience in that sense and i guess from the the student point of view i think what creates a lot of pressure at that age uh, and that time of your life is that feeling that we should know what we're doing by that point or there's an expectation from our parents or our peer groups of feeling that pressure to succeed in in a kind of a, a very kind of classical sense of the word um, in terms of, of grades and, and knowing what we should be doing. A lot of pressure uh, that you should know this stuff by now, when actually very often we all fall into jobs that are not actually uh, jobs that were there when we were going through that system. What kind of inspiration can you give to students right now that are actually going through that process of really trying to figure out what life is about and what drives them? What, what would you say to those people? Oh, I love that question. And you know what? I feel for each one of uh, the audience that's listening that is going through this right now because the reality is we don't know uh, what we want to do often and, and what is our why. Um, and that's what is exactly inspired me really to give back when I found my why and what I really to help and inspire others of, of really making a difference and, and really uh, take care of those who care in, in, in a way. And, and of course, above all, you know, grateful to God and glorify him. So for me, that, that is, is really um, a key moment because we have these mountains, like we want to climb a mountain, but there's so many mountains. So the question is, which one do we want to climb? So it's like the path to the mountains is a little bit muddled up, you know, like which one's, And there's so much information. We live in the best time in terms of information and access ever in the world. So while we live in one of the best time and we have that privilege, because if you want to start up a company, if you know what you're doing, as you say, and you have the right know-how and skills and and the right team, you can make it big. But the question is how to get to that mountain. So the the road to that is very important. And um, uh, there's several things that I, I always kind of, share and, and wanted to advise young, young people and it's perfectly normal not to know what what you want to do mm. um, but uh, first the first thing you need is healthy exposure healthy ex- because I say healthy because it could be unhealthy you know it could also go in, and go into completely different things and some of some of them may have seen and experienced that don't be discouraged if, if you've experienced and you ended up in a uh, in a problem or even in prison in fact uh, uh, just to that audience, I want to put a one, one bracket here. Um, n- one of the, the, the figures I aspire to and really honor is Nelson Mandela. And he spent 30 years of his life in prison. Um, and you know what he was doing? He was doing, while he was in his prison, he was thinking and mapping out how his life is going to be when he comes out. In the details, how, what he's going to do, how he's going to serve. And uh, when he came out, he made one of the biggest difference. Um, mm. And unite people. Didn't go back and do revenges to people. He went and really made a difference to so many people's lives. So I think having that time, sometimes you, you could choose what to use it for. You know, mm. if you ended up in a situation like this, okay, what happened? There's a reason. Reflect on that, but I start thinking of what you're going to do when you get out. Focus. Very important where you where you put your attention, um, and, and that's very important. So first is healthy exposure. If you're in a situation that you're already in a very difficult moment. Change your focus. Don't focus on what 
uh, on the negative stuff and the things that have happened, but focus on the things that you want to do and you visualize how you imagine um, life, how, 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 a, how a passionate life look like. You know, let's think about that. What does it mean to you personally? And um, there's several things that are for the audience of students and young people that they need to do and, and go through because you're right. By the age of 25, you should know yourself very well. The first, I see life in four seasons. First season is the season of learning from up to 25, where you learn all the different principles of how to live a victorious and a passionate life. And unfortunately, that's not really. Um, taught uh, in, in a great details at school. And that's one of the things that we're missing. It's a lot of uh, noise out there, a lot of choice, and we don't know what to do. So uh, I'll share some of those principles in a minute. Second season is from, 20, from 25 to 50 is the season of execution. That's when you have a family, you have children, you build your big strides in your career or business. And you got to really know when you press one button, what happens next. This is so important, you know, like, someone said life is like a box of chocolate you never know what you're going to get no i disagree life is like a box of chocolate with a menu if you know the principles so <laughs> i really encourage people to learn what does it mean uh, of those principles and, and how to live that because it's not just about money it's about relationships it's about values it's about trust what if you if you can only buy things with money you're poor that's the reality whatever money can can buy relationships can pay for it so there's a lot of things that people need to and just to finish on the season of the way you see life the third season is is a season of succession and legacy so by the age of from 50 to 75 you actually have a lot of wisdom wealth um experience that you could really prepare the next generation and start giving back i really and that's an amazing system because you have so much to do um and and really prepare uh of the next generation and the final season is if the average life expectancy, some people never get to see the fourth season is the season that I see of honor and really going around in enjoyment of what you've done of your fruits, because the people you've mentored at the age of, of the learning now, they're in the season of execution and wherever you go, people welcome you and you honor the fruits of your, of your life. So I, I kind of just want to put this into perspective because it's not just the short term success that matters because some mm -hmm. people look at a, uh, think of the next two or three or five years. And I see a lot of startups and even unicorns, they will be successful, but they will not make it beyond five to 10 years, some of them, because there's many other principles that are not in place or they're violated. So th this is important when you look at them. And I also uh, uh, speak to a lot of executives that they reach a certain point at age of 50 or 45, and they don't know what's next. You know, what do you do after being a CEO of a large organization? You know, it's it's just a very interesting transformation in time. And so when it comes down to young people study and learn those principles, uh, I'll give two, two keys uh, for, for, for example, um, the, to, to have to have that that important element of living that uh, life with, with passion. Focus on take care of yourself first. Care. Care in terms of your uh, spiritual, mental, and physical well-being every single day. So if you don't do that, the, the problem is, is there's many other domino effects. And what I do just to, do, to, to take care of that myself, because sometimes you don't have time during the day. I wake up, I started at four, didn't work out too early. At five o'clock was okay for me. So I started at five. You know, I go, I, I obviously, I, I'm grateful, I pray, and I go to uh, listen to certain things to upgrade and, and my own self, you know, for a couple of hours while I'm training. So that kind of works very well. And mo most people do that, which is great, by the way. Podcast is a great way of reading books. So, and then when I finish, um, probably will do some cold showers or contrasting that's also helpful for your health. And then have a great breakfast, like some avocado for the brain and, and salmon, uh, uh, tomato for the heart. Um, and uh, uh, the whites of the eggs, you know, uh, the, to just get uh, get some protein with it, because I train uh, quite a lot, at least five to seven times a week. So for me, th these are the kind of things that are essential. So at nine nine o'clock or eight thirty, I have the breakfast till nine or, or thereabouts, and I'm ready to serve. Why? Because I've taken care of my spiritual, mental, and physical well-being. So then I can give a lot more to the people. And it's not about what you want, it's what you give. Just remember that because people are not interested in what you want. People are interested in what you give. 
go and give and serve. What, what sets your heart on fire? Ask that yourself. Ask, ask yourself several things. Well, first of all, start with self-awareness. I would ask people to go and find out their, your closest five. What do you really think of me? What's your perception? When you say whatever, Nick, what are the first thing that come, come about you? And when you know where you are, your perception of people closest or some of your friends, but honestly, you then have a very clear understanding that you may disagree, that's fine, but it's important to really know what they think because that will define your growth path because then you ask the question, who do I want to become and why? So when you have that where you are and what they think of you, who you want to become, this defines your growth path. But you also want to self-discover yourself and there's a couple of great tools that I, that I use. One of them is strengths finder. Find out what you're really good at. Really your strengths. What are the things that are natural to you? Once you understand yourself, what your strengths are, ask yourself, what sets my heart on fire? What is my passion today? You know, what's, what's the, and ideally have an intersection between those two. That will be a, with a combined with healthy exposure, start to be exposed to things that you have excitement about and don't go with the attention. What, what I'm going to learn and should take go with intention. What's, what am I going to contribute and give? This is the key. Start giving. Mm. Absolutely. And, love that. And, and that, that a lot of people that think, well, how am I going to give? I don't have my, well, of course you do. Of course you, you have something to give, maybe something. And that's why it's important to know what your strengths are and say, that's what I'm really good at. Um, and yeah, um, that. that's really cool. Do you know, it's something that you've mentioned a couple of times. It's something that, uh, again, I also saw when kind of researching on uh, LinkedIn that, um, your relationship with with God, your your religion, your spirituality, your faith, actually it's really interwoven between your personal and your professional life. And I think you can really, again, using that word feel, I very much feel the same, that you, you feel that vibe throughout your, your business and professional pursuits as well. It's It's led by compassion. So I'm guessing that's a really important factor for you, isn't it, to, to, to weave that faith into every aspect of your life. D does that really empower you through those times when you do go through those adversities or challenges? You know, what, what a wonderful question. You can thank you for picking up on this as well. Um, let me describe a situation where I, I, I would really very difficult moment. For me, that was the lowest of the lowest I could, I could be. And I'm naturally a natural optimist. It doesn't really happened very often to me and uh, um, there was a moment where um, we had to go through a buyout and, and then we go through cases you know disagreement with so forth so we, we had to really go through some very difficult um, uh, case of the lawsuit and buyout and so forth and that moment was very difficult for me because it impacted on everything we do we didn't know you know do we leave the team behind? Do we, uh, what do you do in terms of next? And it's never been a question, of course, for me personally, but, you know, to step up and, and uh, take care of the team. But that, th these moments, when you reach a moment of this kind, when, when something is not right, I don't blame anyone. I'm, on, I'm really grateful for all the experiences, even those ones, because I believe those difficult moments and, and challenges are the best ones for you to, uh, the, what it, for me, failure, means you've reached your, you maxed out your understanding and philosophy and you need to upgrade. That's what it means. My philosophy and understanding has reached its limit. It's time to upgrade. So I always said to me, that's my best moment. But in that moment, it wasn't just one thing. What has also happened, the family was impacted. I didn't know when I'm going to have a family, to be honest. So, so you have a one attack, second attack. Um, you don't know where you're going to have money to pay. Uh, everything is at stake. Family is, is really deeply affected. Parents, of course, are worried, you know, all, all of that. And, and there's a moment where, you know, it, it, what else can it be? Um, I'll, I'll share, obviously, some health issues later with some of the parents. And, and so it's, it's everything seemed to come at, at the same time. It wasn't one, one of the... So I thought, you know what? Um, there was no one I could actually, and I'm grateful for the team and the people around me. In fact, that's not, you know, just to say I honor, but deep down in you, you need that strength and positivity and that attitude. So you could get help here and there and some borrow here, but 
but the real help, you know, there was no one I could turn to that to give me that healing that I need inside. I don't know if I express myself, but you cannot escape from yourself, if that makes sense. You have to be your heart and mind need to be together. The, the, the cross motivation should sort out. And when you worry about also this, those things, this is when God has helped me in, you know, to have my peace by listening, by learning the principles for hours and hours and hours in prayer. And really, I, I, I did the things that, that were right in terms of principle. I didn't give up on my family. It was tough. Most people would probably in difficult moments, if you don't pay attention for a year or two, might, might actually, you know, say, well, that I've tried enough. I made a decision. I said, I'm not doing that because I know that God will bless that, will bless the loyalty, will bless the fact that you're doing the right thing. And it was full of temptation, full of distractions. Of course, people want, you know, a piece of you, so to say, in that. But when you, when you understand those principles and, and really, when you talk about care, I look at people like a scientist, you know, and philosophies and history of fine because success leaves clues. For me, that's so. I haven't found anyone in my own uh, research and view greater than than when I say God, especially Jesus. It's one thing to die for people that you love, but it's another thing to to die for people that hate you or want to crucify you. and just say forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I'm here to help. I haven't seen that anywhere else so for me that's the greatest authority of care uh, uh, as, as far as i've discovered and in prayers in the most difficult of moments where a mental breakdown happens really that's when you could go into clinics and so forth and that's happened is god has given me the strength and power to go through that challenge and not only go through it but come out victorious in other words my dad almost died later. He came. I have him out. Within two months, he came back full of passion and life. My wow. son was in hospital for 19 days. He didn't know whether he's going to have an extremely difficult operation, how he's going to come out. It's safe. He gave me the strength to, to not to have the operation and, and bless him and help him. So when you go through those challenges in a, a period of a year or so, there's so many things that are happening mm. at the same one after the other. And um, that's why for me it's so important because I want to say something here that whatever you see, it, it's not me. It's, you know, I'm grateful and it's for God's glory. Why? Because he gives me the strength. I'm here to serve. I am nothing without him. That's what I wanted to highlight and say. And, uh, um, and I hopefully explain why because thank you. I, would, I wouldn't have done it without him. Yeah, thank you so much for, for sharing that. And again, it's... Um especially in a professional setting, I guess, in, in the truest sense of the word, um, that, it, again, it's just something that's not really spoken about. But but I know from individual conversations, even with people being on the show before, how important the kind of faith and belief and core values are to, to anybody's mission, personally or professionally. And as you said, it's that kind of the the way to find order in the chaos and and that's so important so thank you for sharing that with such clarity and and candor i do appreciate that uh, marianne this show is sponsored by forging people transformational speaking coaching are you truly being heard in life in business in education even at home your ability to deliver any message with clarity power and emotion will have an ultimately defining impact on your success as a speaker, leader, and influencer. For more information, contact team at forgingpeople.com. Are you truly being heard? It's time to find your voice. I guess um, one thing I did certainly want to touch on in terms of your work that you do now with, with leaders and in your coaching capacity is that obviously we're, we're recording this in April of 2022. We are just over two years of a, a global pandemic, which is still very much there to some extent. But also we have kind of things like global conflict and we have other big world issues that have gone on over the past couple of years. 
essentially what you find is a lot of people have been acting uh, from a position of fear and it's kind of changed their belief system. Um, there's also the element of things like lockdown have kind of conditioned us to think that inside is safe and outside isn't safe. And even though these things were put in place to protect us and, and absolutely, in my opinion, were the right thing to do, that it has had an impact on how we go out into the world. And I think 2022 is kind of like we're stepping back out into the, the light of a brand new day. How have you found the impact of fear on leaders that you work with? And actually, are there any cultural differences? Because I know you work globally. Uh, are there any cultural differences in terms of uh, geography, in terms of how people are reacting to stuff? What a fantastic question again. And just to you know address also share some of that the rest of the the story of in, two, in 2006 i have started uh, in executive search at that time and i was grateful to go through the different stages um and i really got very interested in people and, and psychology and decision and and my i'm very curious naturally i'm a very curious person I ask a lot of questions so uh, I, that that's like uh, helps me a lot in many ways but but sincerely and and uh I, you know, for me, I, th I think this is important, Fred, right? in fact, when you are uh, helping leaders with, uh, especially to find their next step. I mean, Nick, this is so important uh, because I believe, um, I love what I do because I, I love to, um, I don't see people for who they are, I see for who they could become. So I, I kind of can see things that they may not be able to because I've spoken to so many great leaders from multi-billion companies in San Francisco the way to Tokyo and, and really understand what's going on in China, what's going on in Mexico, US or, or Japan. These are things that, and you're right, there is cultural differences, but when it comes down to the fundamentals, all people respond to care and love. I can tell you that. And if you're sincerely interested in someone, people will see that. If you're um, enthusiastic or passionate about something, that will shine through your work, your workplace or family or everybody will, will notice. So for me, what we do is, it's never been just exciting to do executive search. I always wanted to push the boundaries and see what else can we do. So looked at leadership due diligence, uh, le uh, a strategic succession, and, and how can we really um, uh, make a difference, not just make a placement here or there. And, and I, why make a difference is, is because why we do this is because if we bring more people into roles and, and jobs that where they're thriving, not surviving, everyone will feel it because most of our time we spend is at work. Or well, imagine if we have a world where people, every one of us is like passionate and thriving in their workplace. What kind of world will have where you are, because your family will feel it. You'll, be, you'll show up for your family. You will, your friends will feel it. Everybody will feel it of, of how you radiate because you love what you do. And you can choose to spend you know, extra hours to work on this because you're passionate, you love what you do. So for me, why we have uh, chosen to help leaders who care to fulfill their vision by attracting exceptionally gifted talent is because leaders who care make the difference between good to great. They're the ones who... Actually, yeah, money is important, and don't get me wrong, financial can make a difference, but what you do with those money makes the difference of good to great. This is where how you help and serve. And those leaders who care, they're consistent in their behavior. In other words, they really bring certainty in a certain situation. They really know how to understand and take care of people by putting them in roles where they really can thrive. And, and this is the thing that our mission, why we do this is because if we consistently figure this out and find the, the systems and through all the assessments and steps that we, are, we have in our process that we reach to that consistency of, of placing people where they're thriving or surviving, we're making a difference. We just play, we've placed uh, some time ago a CEO of 20,000 people in Germany. Imagine that. That is an average family size of four is, is 80,000 people directly impacted by that single placement. Well, this is very important. So we better do a great job in that because it's not just, it's not transaction. It is making a difference. And if this leader um, paves the way in, with his own or her own behavior, the impact will be, will be significant. So that's how I look at uh, uh, things. And, and there's a, 
a way to attract exception and retain exceptionally gifted talent. And uh, I'll, I'll mention to you this about the groups of people you should have in your life. Um, but um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of a perspective of, yeah. of, uh, of what it is. But to come back to the cultural differences, um, yes, there are. You need to respect them. You need to understand them. Because Be curious of why people do certain things. Mm. Honor them. And don't try to change people, impose people. Just yeah, absolutely be be and an, uh, receptive and accepting them for for who they are, and then you'll see the, the impact you can. Yeah, absolutely. And Maria, again, thank you so much. And the I think one of the most common factors that that are very it seems to be kind of uh, right across the board, whether it's globally or it's cross sector as well, is our relationship with change. Change always seems to be up there as one of the biggest anxiety triggers, if not the biggest anxiety trigger because of that thing that you just mentioned, where we're kind of hardwired to look for danger, we're hardwired to look for fear. So therefore, we always assume that change is going to be a negative action. And I think especially through things like company mergers, company acquisitions, uh, key people leaving, all the things that you get involved in week by week, how, if somebody is going through a period of change, personally or professionally, could you give them a, a few tips on how they can start to be, to, to change their relationship with change, to, to kind of, uh, to either inspire, or give them some tools to use? With pleasure. Look, um, first of all, I, I believe that um, th there's two ways why people change. There's two reasons or, or, or two uh, kind of factors in, in, a, in a main. One of them is you change because you want to. You really want to and, and this is linked to uh, who do you want to become and why. And this is why I would encourage people to start really deep down, go deep down um, and, and really find out what excites them, what sets them really on, on fire. And, and when people are in a situation where there's a lot of change and they have fear, fear is no good, guys. The reality is when there's fear, something is fundamentally wrong, you've got to overcome that. You've got to face your fears. That is absolutely my advice. Do never allow somebody to run you by fear. And if that's the case, change that relationship. You got to get out of this. Why? Because nothing good comes out of fear. And there are two things that you need to be aware of. When you're in cross motivation, I say cross motivation where your heart tells you one thing, but your mind and common sense tells you something else. You got to get out of this situation as soon as possible. Why? What if you... Because if you're in a situation, a job, you don't like what you do and you're there because of the money, you got to get out. If you don't get out, that's when diseases comes in. You get sick if you don't get out for many years. So you got to make sure you invite your mind and heart on a cup of coffee, with your favorite beverage or drink with some whatever you like, you know, food, and enjoy that moment and just go deep down and say, hey, what excites me? If there was no limits, how would I imagine life? And start getting healthy exposure yeah. because this is healthy exposure. Go and find out people who have done it and gone through this. Success leaves clues. Go and find out what other people have done. Tools. I would advise, uh, and, uh, and by the way, we're not a partner of this organization, but I found this too interesting and it's focused on the post. It's a strength finder. It probably takes uh, um, 20 minutes to do, but go and take the strengths finder test and find out what, what really, what are you really good at? And find out, ask people what they really think of you. That's just what I mentioned earlier. And there's also, I'm actually having a, a, co a, a podcast later today with um, uh, actually a great leader and um, one of the key founders of the passion test as well. I, I love that as well, because find out what are you passionate about at this moment in time what really mm. excites you and go out and give you not everything has to be for money as i mentioned my biggest success has come not when i pursued money or, or success when i was starting to give and follow my passion and, and something that that enjoys you know giving start giving and since i i study a lot of stories and and of great people there if we just talk about success and not only financial because for me i, I look at three things Financial abundance, that's important. I look at, are you in control of your time? In other words, if can you really take time and not worry about things and 
that will fall apart and, and you choose where to invest your time. And the third thing is, are you in peace with yourself? Peace, meaning you don't have that cross motivation. You've not done the wrong thing. You've not robbed someone. You're not selfish. You're not basically uh, disloyal to your to people. These are things that are essential when you look at. So when I look at those three things in place, I know something great is coming. I can recognize this. So uh, I, I advise people really to, to, to do that and, and really find out um, at this moment what are their strengths, what excites them, and uh, whatever they decide to do, whether this is a career change, whether this is uh, setting up a business, um, start with giving, giving your time. But if you really want to get to the highest level, and I've studied the richest man that ever lived, was a great leader um, at the beginning of the 19th century. And uh, he was the one who saved America from the Great Depression. He gave the money to J.P. Morgan, uh, Pierpont Morgan, to save to, the money from the Great Depression. That's in history. And he had one principle that he never um, failed on. And this is tithing. He gave... 10% from the first penny he earned for the rest of his life, his wealth was equal to over 400 billion of today's money. First, average, what, what do you think in 19th century? What was the average life expectancy? What do you think? I, actually, 20, 20th century to be more precise because you live in, you know, between 1800 and 1900. Yeah, not, not very old compared to today's. So, yeah, if we'd say 50, 60, maybe, maybe more, uh, yeah. he lived to the age of 98. Wow. So he had four children, if I'm not mistaken. You know, I need to look at some of the, the, the specifics. And he spent a lot of time with his family. So he had it all. And um, there are reasons why. Because he wasn't here to build wealth and money. He was custodian. He was serving. Remember, guys, we'll, we're here for a period, for for hopefully several seasons, not one. Um, and only God knows for how long. But while we're here, we better make an impact. We better really give mm. and make a difference. And don't neglect your relationships. Invest relationships to people. Start with you. Take care of you. Start with your family. These are the priority. I know for me, God first, and family, and, you know, me and family. And, and then obviously looking at your team, your people you may spend most of your time, the coffee man, the butcher, the, the bread maker, what do you do for them? How do you give that? And then find out what excites you deep down and say, you know what? I'm going to go and give some time. Mm -hmm. Just donate your time or, and money or both, whatever you can. You see, see some great, great things happening. Marian, thank you so much. I mean, th this really does align with something that's kind of, it's been in my kind of conscious for, for quite a long time. So back in my employed days when I was kind of client facing that I would kind of listen to people like the late great Zig Ziglar. And oh, so amazing. again, very, very successful uh, entrepreneur speaker and everything else. But to him, money was a byproduct. Absolutely. It's important. I think he actually said in one of his talks that kind of I've lived without money and I live with it and I know which I prefer, but his driver was actually was his faith. His driver was, his ability to, to transform and motivate and to inspire very much akin to, to what you've kind of showcased for us today. And I think actually that's quite a nice way to look at it. If the financial, well, if your financial reward becomes a byproduct, then actually, like you say, you put your focus on the things that actually make you happy and it encourages a kind mindset. And that will set you free. And uh, just to kind of wrap it up for your audience, and then I'm sure some of them are, successful leaders and executives in, in HR and so forth. What is important here is if you really want to attract exceptionally gifted talent and retain them, I, I, I see like every one of us um, should have, I call them destiny helpers. Those people that really that you need in your life to make a difference, to live a, a victorious and exceptional, a passionate life. And there are four, four groups of people that really every one of us needs if we're to have that, if we're to live this such a, you know, extraordinary lives. The first group of people we need, the divine connectors, people that will, con they may not have the, the, the solution to a problem, but they'll connect us to the people we need in our lives to make a difference.
So the divine connection is the first group. Second group is people of influence, economical, financial, social, political, or no categories that really relate to your values and are really important because they can make a difference at, at the key moments of your life. Third group of people, exceptionally gifted talent. What does it mean? Where someone understands you with a few words and make much more than we expected without telling them what to do. These are people that are passionate, that have both that care, the value, but also um, abilities to make a difference. And the opposite is when that won't happen. You repeat 50 times the same thing, doesn't happen. You know, that, that's, that's the opposite. So we all know, and these are people who make, who can not only help you, deliver on your on your vision but they also make it your journey more enjoyable and these are the people that are really very very interested to to bring and and the final group of people is like they're better than gold you know uh, they're the garas you know like we say the boring garas this is a as i've heard of great leader you know a teaching and uh, that i really deeply admire um and these are people where if they if somebody if, if you get arrested or if they caught you doing something wrong they will not judge you. They'll be the ones, hey, are you okay? How can I help? I endorse you. I, I'm really, and hopefully that's your, your husband or wife, for sure. That's one of them. But it, if you have friends like this, that you are just you and accept you for who you are. And if you have 10 of those people in your life, you'll be the luckiest man in your generation. So Love that. look at that in terms of criteria for leadership. And then if you want to attract those destiny helpers in your life, the question is, who are you in those categories, those categories for people around you? Who, what, how you serve, what destiny helper you are to the people around you? And when you start to be one, all those people that you need in your life, they will show up in your life in those four categories. So um, okay. it's starting with you, not with wanting them. Wow, love that, Marion. It's a great conversations. I literally could talk to you all day. <laughs> It'll be a very, very long show. So we're going to have to get you back for a future season for sure. Um, but the question I like to ask everybody who comes onto the show is this. I'm going to set the scene. I am now the MC of the O2 Arena in London. 20,000 people have paid their hard-earned money to come and hear you speak. I can see that happening absolutely, by the way. Uh, I'm just about to call you to the stage and your walk-on music kicks in. That song that motivates you, that lifts you, that gets you at peak state. What would your walk-on track be and why? What would be what? My walk-on track? Your, your walk-on song, your walk-on uh, track, your walk-on music as you walk to the stage. That song that kind of motivates you and lifts you. Um, I, I love one really wonderful song. Thank you for this question. I listen quite a lot. Uh, it's called Ebenezer, and my help has come, my season has come. This is the song that I would, uh, I would really, uh, I really welcome. Amazing. Marian Samokov, big round of applause. Thank you, Nick. You're really honor and and uh, My honor. Has... <laughs> Honestly, so, I, I mean, I hope everybody else, and I'm sure they would have, have enjoyed it as much as I have. I've learned a lot today. It's been a great conversation. Your insights are invaluable to, to every single person that's kind of watching this or listening to this right now. So from me to you, Marion, thank you so much. And thank you for donating your busy time to be on the show. It's been a pleasure to have you on. I'm sure it'll be the first of many appearances, I'm sure. Thank you, Nick. Uh, God bless you on everything you do. And on also blessings to all of your audience and listeners. Thank you. Thank you so much. And for everybody else, well, that's a wrap. Please stay tuned for next week's episode. We have another amazing guest to bring you. We have Sean Doherty, who's the founder of 555 Club, who's bringing mindfulness and relaxation techniques into the financial world. So uh, very, very fascinating uh, episode coming up. Please stay tuned, hit like and subscribe and all that jazz. But for now, be well, take care and stay happy. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Do hit the like button and subscribe to stay tuned for future episodes. Published every Monday and available through YouTube or the podcast platform of your choice. See you next week.